Today on our 2021 Ford F-250, we're going to be taking a look at the best top, super top truck bed cover. So you will have two different options. You can either choose to get the windows all the way around or you can grab some that will just have the window in the back. It's all up to you and just check out our website and use our fit guide to find the right one for you. This is kind of a unique product. Well, I'm trying to figure out what we're gonna compare it to. Well, one, it's kind of like a tonneau cover because it protects the stuff on the inside, but it's taller. And it's kind of like a tent, like the right line gear tent, but you can drive with it. But it's pretty much a camper shell. But the cool thing about this is it's gonna be a lot easier to live with than your normal camper shell. Because one, you're gonna have to have multiple people lift it up to take it off and you gotta store it somewhere. With this, it can stay on there, but we can condense it down. So I would definitely say it is probably one of the most versatile things you can put on the bed of your truck. Comparing this to a normal camper shell, I would definitely say that I think the normal camper shells are gonna be a little bit more watertight, but I'm not saying that the seals are lacking. We have plenty of seals here. So one, we have one in the tailgate, so. It's a nice big rubber seal, so I don't think that's going to really leak. And all the zippers are hidden by about an inch and a half to two inches of overhang. So I don't really think that's really going to leak, but we were kind of reading what you guys were saying about the cover. And a lot of the times you just saw a little bit of water kind of creep in through the sides, but there is a seal down there as well. So this might leak a little bit, but I don't really think that the seams are lacking. I just think it's just not a fiberglass camper shell. But as far as this thing being solid, it's ridiculously solid. The material is pretty much what you see on Jeeps. So it's real thick canvasy type materials. So this is gonna be really strong. And the cool thing about it is the way it's kind of laid out, you, when you set it up, it stretches it really, really tight. So it's not really flimsy and I'm literally, you know, moving it as much as I can and it's moving the truck. So don't think that this is going to be some little chintzy thing that's going to be flapping around like crazy. This thing is actually pretty solid. All of the windows are going to have a nice glued seal all the way around and they are tinted on the outside. We are going to have one window that's not going to be tinted and that's on the inside. So you'll be able to still look out the back of your cab and see whatever's in there. So that doesn't need to be tinted, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. So let's go ahead and just pull this out like this. And then we can zip this up so I can show you that window that's not tinted, which I kind of like that. So then you can see all the contents of the cab right back there. So it's not tinted or anything. And I'm glad that they put a window back here because I was afraid that they weren't and then the water was going to get into it. But they did and I like it. Just to reiterate, this thing's super solid. So the way we have it all tensioned up, I really like the mechanism, which is over here. So you just have a little channel to slide through. So once you kind of get it all down, you sit there and you push this through. It has a couple different grooves and it really gets it extremely tight. So just kind of moving this thing around, like it really, and if you really want me to hang on, I can, but it's solid. I mean, I'm really, really impressed with it. I do like how on the inside of the canvas, it's not black like the outside because it kind of helps illuminate it in here. So with, with our little bed rug that we have in here, kind of makes it a little bit darker compared to just the white walls. So having the lighter canvas is nice, but I would probably get a couple lights in here just to kind of light the place up a little bit. Comparing it to a tonneau cover, we're gonna get a lot more bed space that's covered. So from the top of the rails to the very top, we're adding a little over two foot, which is pretty much more so doubling the capacity. So if you have just a lot of bulky stuff going on a long trip or you just keep a lot of taller toolboxes in here, this is gonna be really nice and it's something that a tonneau cover won't let you do. But it does install kind of the same way as a tonneau cover. You just have these rails right here and then you just have the clamps. 
Whatever the case may be in your situation, we can roll this up to where it's kind of out of the way. So what we have to do though, is we're gonna have to take this little rail and slide it all the way out. We are gonna have to find a place to store this, but luckily we have a truck. So just throw it in the bed. And then oh, what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and just roll this up. Probably be easy to do from the inside. Roll it up. And we're gonna have a little elastic bands, just like this, to secure it and get it out of our way. Once we get it all rolled up, you just take it, and we'll just go around the edge like this. This is, is not that heavy, so it doesn't need a whole lot. Well, that's all you gotta do. So if it's a nice day out, we can go ahead and just have this rolled up. We could drive with it like this if we wanted to, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Just put it back down and zip, zip, and we're good. Pretty simple thing. Whether you just want to just have this thing rolled up or you want to condense this down, we're going to have to remove all the windows. So you just take this. It's going to be just fairly simple, but we are going to have to find a place to store the window so you want to store them in a nice safe place the easiest way to take this window off is from the inside so you just slide it and as you're sliding it you're kind of bending it on my left hand side and then just store this in a safe place and then for the sides we want to undo our zippers and then we're gonna have all these seals that we had such a fun time with before. We're gonna to have to just undo all of this and get everything disconnected and stored away somewhere. There we go. To make it a little bit easier to get the rest of the canvas off, I'm gonna release some tension, which all you gotta do is kind of just push back a little bit and lift that up. Oh yeah. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Do that on both sides. And now this will just come off so much easier than before. Just like that. And the same thing for the driver's side too. And this is the easy part. You just gotta gently let her go back. And she should just kind of condense down all nice. You might have to get in there and situate it a little bit. Maybe get it to where it folds the way you want it to fold. And as, the, as of right now, even though this side's a little higher than the other, so as of right now, we're still below the backs of our back seats, so we're not really obstructing our view at all, which is cool. And we also have these little straps right here that are gonna wrap around and clip in right here. It is pretty tight, which is good. Let's click that in. After we do our last strap, which is this, and this is kind of cool, so what we wanna do is wrap it around I'm gonna put it into this slot. I found it best to go down here and get it facing up on the other side, like that. Slide her in. She's locked into place. And that's just a little added protection. And we do have one of these on both sides. For you fifth wheel or gooseneck haulers, in the very center right here, where all of our hauling stuff is gonna be, it's only adding or taking away about like four inches from the bulkhead. So I would say it's safe to say that you can still maybe gooseneck and fifth wheel haul with this. But if it doesn't work for you, if you look down at the bows, follow this, follow this, there we go. This right here, we can just pull these pins and we can remove these just with our hands. You just go ahead and pull these out and then we can take this whole entire thing off and we can just keep the rails. So it's not really limiting your truck at all. All in all, I think this is for a lot of different types of people. Me, personally, I like camping out of my truck. So this is gonna be a really cool option to have 
a covered sealed place to be able to go on camping trips so I don't have to have anything behind me so I can really go deep into the woods. If you are one that's just kind of looking for a camper shell, this is going to be a lot easier to store. It's going to be a lot easier to put on and take off. This is a one-man show. With camper shells, typically it isn't. And then for the tonneau cover people, if you need to cover some of the stuff in your bed, this is going to give you twice as much coverage. So for you fifth wheel owners, if you have a fifth wheel that doesn't stay underneath the rails, this is going to be a great solution for you. If you're convinced at this point, just stick around and we're going to show you exactly how we got it all set up. Let's go ahead and kind of get familiar with all of the contents of our package. So we're going to have on one side, we're going to have two different types of rails, right? One really short one and one's going to be a little bit longer. We're going to start with the longer one and notice on one side of the longer one, we're going to have one stud and on the other side, we're going to have two studs. We're going to start with the one stud side and we're going to take this bracket. So to figure out which one is driver and which one's passenger, start with the one stud side and then put it up onto the rail. And we want this little lip right here to be facing the outside. So this is our driver's side rail. So just get that kind of straight. And then we're gonna take this bracket right here. So this bracket's gonna fit like this. And we want the little tab to be facing up. So just like this. But I did have to kind of hammer this down a little bit because it's really, really tight. So what you want to do, I did, I just took a little extension just so it has room for the stud to go through. I kind of just put it down like this and just hit it with a hammer. You don't have to be too aggressive with it, but just enough to get it seated down in there. It is very tight. So just kind of work it around so we can get this down so we can access those threads. Now that that's done, we can take our little cap nut and we can screw this on just like this. And then we can take an 11 millimeter socket or a wrench and tighten that up. Definitely use this with a hand tool, not a power tool. And we don't want to really over tighten this, but make it nice and snug. Now we're going to take the smaller bracket with this little jagged edge right here. So notice the holes on the bottom. These are going to connect both our long and shorter bar. So first thing we want to do is we're going to have a longer pin and a bigger washer. I'm going to put those on like that. And that's going to go somewhere around that rail there on the long slotted end. And then on the other side, there's just going to be one little hole, and that's where this is going to go. So now that that's done, let me bring this stuff over so you guys can see. We're going to take the shorter one towards the back, and then the longer one like this. So all of this should line up. Just like that. All right. And then we can take our cap screws and put those on. I'm just going to get them all like hand tight and then tighten them all down all together. So you just do that. And this should be the end of your cap screws if you've already done the other side. And with these cap nuts, all it is is 11 millimeter socket. Just tighten these up. You want to kind of tighten them up evenly. And one thing I did, so we want to make sure that these rails are as lined up as we can be, just because we do have a little bit of gap right here because of the pins. So just kind of hold these two together as you tighten them down, just to get them nice and flush with each other. And just tighten them all down to nice and even, but don't over tighten. So now, we're gonna flip this over and we have some foam tape. This isn't staying on the vehicle that we have right now, so I'm not gonna do it, but it's just gonna protect your bed from any scratches. So all we wanna do is kinda of put it from this edge all the way down to the other side of the rail. And this is gonna be the part that sits 
on your bed rails. So do that for both rails just to protect your truck. So once we get the rail put up, just notice this little lip on the rails of the bed truck. And we just want to line this little thing up right there. And then with the clamps, we're going to have two clamp per side. And they want you to put it as far apart as possible. So as close to the end of the rail as you can, which right here is where this one will go. And then as close to the cab of the truck as we can as well. So once we get that kind of in place, we want to make sure that this line's going to be nice and consistent. So we have the same measurement from here to the other side, both in the back and the front. So make sure it's as straight as possible and then put two clamps on each rail and you'll just need a 14 millimeter socket to tighten it down. Now for the top half, what we want to do is we want to find the uprights that do not have brackets on them and to connect them, we're going to have two of these little bars right here and that's going to be the way that they snap on together. So then another thing we need to do is take the little strap and then the strap that we're using is going to have the little buckle on the end. So put that on before we put this into place. And then another thing to think about is we want this little short bar to be facing this way. So we're going to take it and we're going to go on the rail and with our longer little pin, we're going to put that through. all the way through like that. And then we can put a washer on there and then a little pin. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up this hole at the bottom. But before we do anything, we wanna put our remaining big washer on like this. And we wanna put this through the hole. Kind of gotta mess with it a little bit for it to line up. Once we get that through, we'll put the smaller washer on there. And then we'll take our little clip and put that through the hole. This would be a little bit easier with an extra set of hands. If you got them, use them. If not, it's definitely doable by yourself. Cool. So now with our second set, we're gonna grab the ones with the brackets on them, and we're gonna do the same exact connection in the middle with the extra little bars. Before you put these on, we need to take the elastics, the one without the buckles on them, and we're gonna put one on this side and one on the other side, but this is gonna be on the long bar. What I mean by long bar, the bar that is the longest, so not the short one right here. So once we do that, you also wanna make sure that the smaller bar is going to be folding in like this, because that way is the right way. So make sure you kind of line it up all right like that. And then down at the pin, we did the same exact thing. But on this one, we're using the medium size washer just because this pin's diameter is a little bit bigger than the other one. So, and we're only going to have to use one on the outside. We won't have to put one on the inside. So this should be the rest of the washers that are in the kit. Now let's do some cleaning. We don't have any cleaning solution that comes with the kit. We just get some rubbing alcohol or something. And what we want to clean is the inside right here. So I'm just gonna give it a good squirt. Shop towel, the cleaner the towel, the cleaner it's gonna get. So just make sure you clean this off really nice and good. And make sure it dries too. A lot of the times, People clean it and it doesn't stick and they wonder why, it's because they don't let it dry. So isoprobe alcohol works the best for this just because it dries pretty quickly and it gets it nice and clean. If you do have like a spray in liner, you want to make sure you clean it extra good because you're going to need a little bit more. The flatter the surface, the better it'll stick. Then we're going to have a roll like this. It's kind of like a hook and loop and what we're going to do is place this on the very top, just like that. So once we kind of get it in place, make sure it's as straight as can be. I'm just kind of using this edge as a reference. And once it is, 
Just run your finger around it. Just make sure it's nice and in place. I did notice that this adhesive is very good. So that is always a plus. Sometimes you don't get good stuff, but this is definitely sticky. Now let's take a look at the top. So there's gonna be a window that's already kind of stitched in, all the other ones we zip in. But this window, it's gonna be the only one that's not tinted either. So you'll find a little slit down here. What you wanna do is be careful. You'll get a sharp knife and kind of cut that slit open. Just the same exact size as you can kind of see where they kind of marked it. Just like that. And then we're gonna take our strap with our little buckle, take the strap part. We're gonna feed this through like this. And then you wanna pull it all the way through until the buckle hits the edge right there, just like that. We can do that on both sides. Now, once we get that done, you just wanna take the strap and we're going to feed it through the male end here just like that we can do that on both sides this next step's kind of fun so what you want to do is take the biggest piece of the whole entire top and we're going to put it on top of the cab as you can see here but we want the inside facing up and then we do want the window that is all stitched together with the whole top up against the back of our cab so then what we're going to do is we're going to fold our beams back. This is the one that's farther or is closer to the cab. And then the longer beam, the one that's longer, we're gonna go ahead and kind of take this and start snapping these into place. If you're doing this on a warmer day, it's gonna not give you as much trouble as us. It'll stretch out a little bit. I'll do your best to kind of slide this up and snap those in. And this is gonna be the first little sewn snaps closest to the window that we're gonna put on the longest bar that's closest to the cap. Now we have our snaps done on the longer bar. So the next one up is right here. And we're gonna do that to the shorter bar on the same assembly. So kind of just do your best to kind of pull it over and just snap it in. Now onto the second beams. We're gonna kinda have this top taken off of the cab of our truck while we're doing this. Just grab it, pull it back, and then just make sure you're doing the next set of snaps. And we're gonna do this one on the shorter bar because it's the closest on both sides. And you really do have to kind of stretch this to get the snaps to go in. So you might have to use a little bit of force. A little bit of force. Come on, buddy. Oh, wow. A lot of force. So now we're done with the snaps. We have all four of the bars all snapped into place with so kind of coming together, getting a little excited. So now what we want to do is the hook and loop that you see right here on the inside, that's going to go to that one strip that we put on the bulkhead. So I'm going to do my best because this cover kind of wants to fold down on me right now. I'm gonna try to find the very, very center and hook this on. Do that throughout the whole entire strip. Now let's take the front bow right here. So the one that's closest to the cab and it wants us to put it on the third tooth. So we have one tooth here, a tooth here, and a tooth here. This little notch at the end is not a tooth. So we're gonna put it right here. So we're gonna lift it up. Click, 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 right in the third tooth. There we go. Do the same thing on the other side. Nice. Now at the front by our cab of the truck, notice this little channel right here on this bar. And then on the inside, 
we're gonna have this little piece right here. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna rotate this around and get this into this lip. It's gonna be hard to kind of see, but you kind of get an idea of where it's going. We're gonna start in the front. And once we get this side in, there we go. We could do the same thing for the other side. Moving on to the back, it's gonna be the same deal kind of, but we're gonna to need to put a little bit of pressure on it because everything else is connected. Having another person would be nice, but let's see if Adam can do it. So I'm gonna pull down, it's the same exact thing, but the only difference between this side is you have this little curved plastic piece and that's gonna end up on that bracket right here. So let's do our best. Get this down. I am putting a lot of weight on this and it's still not really close. So I definitely think this is gonna be a two man job. We ended up getting it, but I was struggling. So what I did, since this is still really, really tight, what I did was I went back here and a couple steps ago, we told you to put it on the third tooth right here. I started thinking, I'm like, you know what? We'll make it a little bit looser if we just push this up. And now that that's connected, I can take this and put it into the tooth that it's supposed to be in. This is a little bit easier. So just a little, little tip for you. Also in the kit, we get a third taillight. So we need to have a third taillight visible to be legal. And since we're kind of blocking the other one, they give us another one right here. So pretty much the bar that's right here, they give us two self-tapping screws. You can just go ahead and mount that up like this. And then you can run the wires. The wires are about four foot long. So you can run those. You're gonna probably have to add an extra wire if you don't have any. We have some in each trailer. I do recommend getting a quick disconnect because it'll be kind of easier whenever you fold this thing back. We also have that. So just tie it in wherever you think is best. And that's pretty much it. I like how they include this because we're blocking our other one. And I think that's pretty neat. The way I would go about it is once I have this, the holes all marked out, I would actually drill another hole through the middle because these tubes are hollow. So what you could do is you can run that wire down this long tube and it's open on this side. And then you can go down and then tie it in to the wires to power up your light. That's gonna keep it pretty clean, just so you don't see all those wires everywhere. You can pull power from a lot of different places, but on our Ford F-250 right now, there is a little spot up here that is legitimately for your extra third brake light. And as you can see right here, just one little wire and it's labeled high mount stop. And this is just for the Fords. You might have this on your vehicle, but just know you can either pull it from a different light or if you have a designated wire for it, which is nice, you can just tap into that. Time for the windows. We're gonna start with the back. So we wanna make sure that the black parts can be facing out. And what we're gonna do is this little J channel right here. There's another one underneath right here. You can kind of see it right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually have to slide this through. We'll have to bend it a little bit. Maybe start on one side. It's kind of awkward to do it, but once I get it going, it shouldn't give us a whole lot of trouble. I'll slide this all the way through. Just like that. Now on both sides, we're gonna have to just engage the zipper. We don't really wanna zip it all the way down yet. Just get it going. We can do that on both sides. On to the last bar. So we didn't unzip, we didn't completely zip the sides and we did that because now we can take this out. And what we're gonna do with the bar is you're gonna see a little C channel right here. So that's where the top is gonna slide through, as you can see like that. So we're gonna have it like this. This smooth side's actually gonna go facing in, and then the seal is gonna be right here. So we're just gonna push that in. And then one thing we also noticed 
is on the bracket right here. So when we kind of curve this over, it's kind of like a Jeep top, right? So this top little channel right here is where this is going to go. So you kind of fold it like this and you slide it into that slot on both sides. You might have to kind of mess with it a little bit for it to fit. But see, that is completely solid and it's on that. And this is going to make it really easy to zip all this stuff up. And then we have a little hook and loop, just like that. And then we can do the same thing on the other side. And once we do that, look at that, perfect. Now we can see if our tailgate closes, which it's lining up with the seal. Check that out. Side window time. It is a little tricky doing this, but I started with the top. So you don't really have to slide these in. They should just fit into the channel right here. So I'm gonna just find a spot and start, but it is gonna take a little bit of finagling to get everything all into place. But we just have different channels. It'll fit into this on the top and start there. I say start at the top because you can get your hand down in here. So once you get it all kind of lined up, you can put your hand flat on the backside and just make sure that it gets put into that little channel. So that's the easiest way to go about it. Because once it's in the channel, then we should be able to kind of slide it to make sure that the zippers are going to line up. A little trick for you. Now that the top's in place, we're going to take this, go underneath this little lip on the rail. I always just kind of like to bend it back, get it over top like this, and then push down and then rotate in like that. Once you get one side, it's kind of easy to do the rest, easier. I'm gonna do this through the whole entire rail. And then once we're done with everything else, I'm gonna zip this all the way up. It gives us a nice little seal. And we can do that for the remaining zippers. And that'll do it for a look at the Best Top Super Top truck bed cover on our 2021 Ford F-250.